Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Merry Games with you. Today, we're looking at sunken crypts and the 20 things you need to do or have in this dungeon. The very first thing you need to do at a crypt is to make a portal, either on top of the crypt or nearby. And make sure the portal is secure by building a small hut around it. This is to ensure you don't have a problem getting back here if you die. I have also placed several campfires on top to make sure the spot is well lit so I can find it again quickly if I get pulled into the swamp by a mob. Of course, you need the swamp key from defeating the elder. This opens the crypt for you. As you can see, just getting here is dangerous. Mobs like Draugr's, Draugr Elites and Blobs will be inside and outside the crypt, except for skeletons. These mobs use Pierce, Slash and Poison to cause damage. This means you need the best gear to deal with the situation. So you should use the full set of Root Armor, the Root Mask, the Root Harness and the Root Leggings. A full set will give you resistance against Poison and Pierce damage and a plus 15 skill points for the bow. This protects you against blobs and arrows from the Draugr archers. It does make you weak against fire, but there's little chance of fire damage in the crypt anyway. You will need your bronze, mace and buckler for when you want to smash blobs or the archers up close, or block slashes from sword-wielding Draugrs. Your root armor will not be good against slash damage, so you need the shield. Equip the bronze, mace and buckler when you first enter the crypt. There could be a blob or Draugr waiting inside for you. Next, you need at least 5 stone and 2 wood to make a campfire just at the entrance of the crypt. This spot allows you to recover and regenerate faster. Placing the campfire will give you plus 2 comfort as you are under a shelter. You should also bring a few logs of core wood and make a sitting log. Doing this gave me 4 comfort and 11 minutes of the rested effect, speeding up health regeneration by 50% and stamina regeneration by 100%. However, you don't just need fire for warmth. You need it for light too. You could use a torch but they don't last, so bring some resin along with a wooden stone if that is the course you take. This is important, especially if you don't have the Diverger Serpent. I recommend the Diverger Serpent if you can get it. It is obtained from the merchant in the Black Forest. You can find the Vec Vizier Rune Stone in Sunken Crypts. When you spot one, click on it to mark the location of the next boss, the Bone Mass. As you can see, this crypt is not far from one. You will need the best bow you can get your hands on and upgrade it to as high as you can get it. That is likely to be the fine wood bow at this point, or the huntsman bow. Both are more than good enough to take on the draugers and blobs in the crypt. I forgot to switch out my draugr fang for my fine wood bow. But towards the end of the video, I will switch back to the fine wood bow which got the job done too. Arrows wise, flint arrows are best, but even fire arrows will do. Despite draugers being resistant to fire, fire arrows do get the job done as you can see from my shots. You need the pickaxe to dig the iron out from muddy scrap piles. These usually litter some of the rooms or block the doorways into them. These muddy scrap piles drop scrap iron as well as leather scraps and withered bones. Withered bones are needed to summon the bone mass boss, so bring those back with you when you leave. Once I cleared away the pile enough to pass, there was a water-filled hallway that led to a submerged dead end. Do not clear out every single piece of muddy scrap pile. Leave some bits to block mobs from passing, but still allows you to jump over or pass through. This will allow you to run back out but not allow any mobs chasing you to pass. Only clear these sticking out pieces once you are sure there are no mobs left in that area. Besides these water-filled dead ends, there are stairs that lead upwards, sometimes to more gates or dead ends. There are tiny caves with yellow mushrooms or some gems, or submerged passageways leading to mob-filled rooms. Good example why I like to leave a little muddy scrap pile or a half wall of it blocking a doorway. Mobs on the other side of it that I can now pick off with my bow and arrow since they cannot cross the threshold. The half wall also provides a little protection from arrows. Neither the blob or the draugr's inside can come out. Seems like I got them all so I remove the muddy scrap pile and discover there's a bone pile on the inside which is a draugr and draugr elite spawner. A spawner usually has the sound of flies buzzing, but I must have forgotten about it. Luckily, there's a slight lip left to stop most of them from coming out. When I said earlier to always leave a lip to block mobs, this is one of the reasons I had in mind. I like to farm draugrs inside sunken crypts. It can be a very good and easy way to get entrails. It depends on how fast the spawner works. I proceeded to kill them for some entrails, but this spawner was slow. This might be because there are other draugrs within range, preventing the spawner from spawning new ones. The spawner will count draugrs above ground as well as those in nearby rooms. So, 
I continued to explore the crypt till I harvested more iron and discovered more rooms. With time, your inventory becomes full. The many chests in the crypt contain various items like gems, coins, arrows, ancient bark, or even chain. These are useful items, but I suggest you leave the items there until you are done with the mine and clear them out bit by bit. You might want to store the less important items like leather scraps in the chest. Bring the iron out first and place in a chest near the portal you constructed. Next, I cleared out the rooms I didn't want to keep and left the ones with the spawners alone. I moved on to other crypts nearby and repeated the process as there are plenty in this area. I already had more than enough iron. My main aim at this point was to find a fast Draugr spawner so I could farm entrails and raise my bow skill at the same time. I want to show you how you can place the campfire and the sitting log in other parts of the crypt so long as the spots they are resting on are dry. The spot in front of this doorway near the spawner has got a small bit of muddy scrap pile sticking out of the ground. I can place the campfire on its edge. The same goes for the sitting log. Rooms that are narrow will have the inner raised ledge closer to the door. That ledge is above the water. This is how I place the sitting log to act as a barrier to block the draugers. However, you will have to keep repairing it with a hammer. If you have 50 core wood, you can also place a core wood stack as a barrier. A lip of muddy scrap pile remains the best method though, as you don't need to constantly repair it. This spot has the best spawner. So this is where I harvested the entrails. Every time a Draugr died, a new one popped in. What was nice was there were many spawns of one and two starred Draugrs and an occasional Draugr elite. The Draugrs could not come out but I could go in when I wanted to. However, I was determined to fill it up with a few hundred entrail before I harvested them. When there were archers, I used the jutting out muddy scrap piles to hide behind or zinged from the right wall to the left and then back to the right, stopping to shoot in the middle. I kept my arrows in the hotbar so I could switch when I felt like it. I had to repair my bow and top up my arrows several times. I'm using the fine wood bow now to show you that this is still a good bow to use even though I use the Draugr Fang bow for the most part. It is still damaging the Draugrs fairly well. It is even staggering the Draugr archers. If you notice, all three that I shot got staggered and died on the second hit with the fine wood bow. This body pile is amazing. I'm getting Draugr elites almost every third spawn. And quite a few star Draugrs. Now I know there are methods to build a Draugr farm using stone and hearths to burn them to harvest entrails, but those require constant repair. I may try that at some point, but I prefer this method. It is fun to use the bow and arrow. Look at all the entrails on the ground. They look so great, shiny and glistening with the sparkles rising from them. This is a good harvest and I don't have to repair anything. Okay, let's see how many I got. Okay, just some advice. Only jump in to retrieve when your health points are high and stamina is back to normal. Also, it would be preferable if any Draugr in there are level 0 and preferably archers since the root armor makes you resistant to pierce damage. We got about 200 entrails, not bad. One last thing before we end the video, there is something else that is not tangible, but probably the most important thing you need to have. That is a healthy dose of caution. As you know, the crypt has many rooms and passages. Some have shallow water while others force you to swim. Don't go running or swimming blindly in. Pause, listen and assess. Be prepared to respond appropriately before entering. Well, that's the end of today's video. Goodbye. See you next time.